Welcome back everybody, this is a little quickie video because I want to prove to everybody that the bus frame has exactly the same wheelbase as that of a Beetle. That's right, it's the same as a Carmen Ghia, it's the same as a Thing, it's the same as a Type 3, it's the same as a Bay Window Bus, Split Window Bus, they all have the same wheelbase. There are some exceptions as far as air-cooled Beetles are concerned, like Super Beetles, which are I think an inch and a half longer, and I don't know what Type 4s have, I've never had the joy to measure one. And again, Vanagons, I don't know if they're any different either, they might be, but Things are different when you start talking about later model cars anyway. As far as air-cooled Volkswagen's concerned, it's pretty safe to say that they all have the same wheelbase. Right, well there you have it. I always said, the only good help I would ever have is if I hired myself, and here I couldn't even take the damn blanket off while I was on video. Oh, man. <laughs> well, that is a beetle pan on top of a bus chassis. Let's go around the front. First. Well, first off, right up here you can look at the bus beam and where the beetle beam would be. So they're currently both in line. Let's take a walk on to the back. Torsion bars right in line. And if we go all the way to the back, to the end of the frame horns with the transmission mounts, same length. So that means this chassis is exactly the same length as a Beetle chassis. So it makes no sense at all to try to lengthen, you know, a body to make it fit on here because I don't have to. It's pretty much making the body fit for mounting because <laughs> obviously this Beetle pan, for example, which may end up being what goes on here. We'll just see what happens when I, as a, uh, pull up available parts and see what's uh, gonna work for me. But first off, I can see that the frame is not going to clear the edge of the Napoleon's hat here, and that means I'm gonna have to cut into the body. But, I don't wanna cut into the body. So I think if I did put a body on this like a beetle, that what I'm gonna do is this 45 degree that you see in here, I'll re-engineer this corner a little bit, bring it down and slope it out, and uh, try to avoid that so that way the body does drop right onto this frame. In other words, modify the frame rather than cut up a body. And I think at that point, that no matter what I do to this frame after that, that I can put any body on it that I want, any Volkswagen body I should say, if I cut that frame head in exactly the same spot and re-engineer that. So that means I could put a Thing body on here, a Beetle body, a Carmen Ghia body, a uh, Type 3 body. I mean, you know, use your imagination on here. So that just might be what I do, do a little re-engineering in there, cut that corner out and uh, just build it back up so it's a little little bit of a different shape. So in other words, this is level, comes to here and perhaps, perhaps a 90. I don't like the idea of a 90 because there's gonna be some stress at that corner. So I might just kind of slope it up at just a steeper angle than what you're looking at there. Anyway, I got a lot of ideas to play with on this. But this should give you an idea, you guys, as to what I'm looking at as far as the length of the floor pan is concerned and how just identical the Beetle is to the bus. And a Type 1, Type 3, Carmen Ghia thing, you know, everything that I mentioned before in the beginning of the video, they're, they're all the same. So it's pretty tremendous to see that this probably won't be all that much work. I'd have to do a little clearancing back here. Frame the uh, frame horn's gotta come off, I don't need them at all, because the engine mount's gonna stay on the bus chassis. Um, there is an IRS stuff right here. I can clip that out and graft it down onto the bus chassis. It's nice seeing these two on top of each other because now I can compare measurements. And one of the things that the bus chassis is versus the Beetle is wider. And when I measure from the outside of the spring plates on both sides to the Beetle spring plates on here, the bus chassis is about two and a half inches wider. So when I narrowed the bus chassis on Gregory, and I cut this uh, torsion tube out of here, I took out roughly an inch and a half, which might have been a little more than what I needed. An inch and a quarter probably would have been the best prescribed method. But nonetheless, that width then worked when I turned it over to IRS because an IRS suspension just happens to be wider than that of a swing axle. So it moved my wheels around, and that's why that system works over on Gregory. But this will be an IRS conversion also. I don't like swing axle. Swing axle stuff rolls over. Somebody wanted to have a battle with me. You know, you don't like transaxle. No, transaxle's the same. I can give a shit about the transaxle. It's, it's a suspension here. The way these wheels, they twist. Instead of just going up and down, which actually has more of a, a gradual turning in like this, the swing axle ones, they do all kinds of wobbly stuff. So what happens when you turn and you, all the weight goes onto the, uh, the uh, outside corner, that wheel will want to 
smash up under the car and the outside wheel will want to tuck under and what that's going to do is it's going to cause the vehicle to want to flip over. So tall vehicles with swing axle on a bus for example, I'm sorry you guys, split window buses like to roll over. I don't want to have anything on, on, on a bus chassis that you know wants to roll over, especially if I'm building this up. I've got a lot of options with this and sports car Sports car doesn't make sense. This is a lifted chassis. You know, why would I build a sports car out of a truck frame? I don't know. That was one of the suggestions that I got. Um, yeah, just I wouldn't want a sports car that drives like a truck. I know there's sports trucks out there, but I'm sorry. They're just not going to handle like a sports car ever would. So that's really not what I'm going for here. But yeah, the idea is to build this thing up, build something lifted, build something big and tough, well, as far as Volkswagen is concerned. I mean, you really can't compare it against a monster truck or something else that somebody else would build out of a lot of big American truck parts. But nonetheless, that's what we've got here. This is what's going on. And now that I've gotten to see this for myself, because this is the first time I'm looking at it too, um, I'm impressed that Volkswagen engineered everything to be, you know, same wheelbase, everything's in the same geometry, the same just the same. The only difference was is the bus stuff is clearly beefier. I mean, look at the torsion tube. You can see the difference in the wheel. You probably can't from the camera because of perspective. But there's my hand wrapped around it and my hand wrapped around that one. I mean, there's like a one inch or more difference of the torsion tube. It's funny how the camera actually makes them look the same size from here. But they're not. Not at all. <laughs> all right, well. That's what we're looking at here. If I were to use a chassis like this, I would definitely lay it right down on that frame. Attach it right to which, it'd be nice if it would bolt in. That'd be really cool. If I bolted in, then that would make it reversible. You know, I can undo it, I can take it back off, I can convert it to something else. Like Lego bricks, I've got more options in the future. So, I may just build it that way. We'll see. Again, options, man. You know, my, my mind and what I can dream up is kind of unlimited. When it comes to this stuff, oh, there's so much that I can do. So much that I can do. Yeah. I think this is gonna be our problem area right through here. We're gonna make that work, that's for sure. And never, whatever we wind up doing to the body, which normally a, a beetle body or something would bolt down to the axle beam. Instead, it's going to, well, I guess I'd see what lines up with the bus beam and then make mounts to attach it to the bus beam or maybe make mounts that weld to the frame that then weld to the body, you know, or, or I should say bolt to the body. So again, options, man. Oh man, I could drop a plan, but I don't think I want to drop a plan. I think I just want to run this one dynamically and just see what I can throw together and how this turns out. Oh man, I got another excitement for, for just a project. And this is gonna be a quick one. I wanna put this together as quickly as possible. I don't want another, you know, six year Eleanor project. I don't expect this thing to be perfect. Whatever I'm building here, I'm thinking it'll be rugged. It'll be, you know, off-road capable. It doesn't need a five-digit paint job. It doesn't need, <laughs> you know? I mean, I think the most expensive thing I'm probably gonna put into it is gonna be tires. I might borrow the engine out of the ATVW just because this thing is lifted. It's gonna be so easy to take an engine in or out of it. And just like the ATVW, geez, I don't even have to jack that up. I could just, you know, four bolts, it's out. So I can borrow it and just stuff it in here and I can have a running um, you know, car, like, almost immediately. Oh boy, guys, I'm so excited. This is awesome. <laughs> so as always, you guys, like, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to plug that dingle belly. Check out duckshit.net for all of my different social media links. Uh, you can also find up there donations, guys, because, hey, I'm short on money. A few people in my last video want to talk about how much I made on YouTube. You know, I, I, I make a living and nothing more. I'm not a rich man by any means, but it does pay my bills and it covers my mortgage here and it pays my utilities and you know, it feeds me. It really does. But if I can get that little bit of extra, maybe we could build a bit slightly better project. Otherwise, I'm scrapping for junk and that's why everything that I build is from junk and why I don't buy new stuff. A lot of people want to argue that too. Hey, Duckman, you should be buying new things. You know, spend your $600 on each segment. Oh sure, $2,400 frame. Instead, I'm making money by fixing it by showing you guys videos. So I don't know. Some people are just so backwards. I wouldn't spend the time. Yeah, well, I'm getting paid for the time. And guess what? It's called residual income, which means I'm not only getting paid today for making that video, but I'm also getting paid tomorrow and the next day and next year 
And if YouTube is still around 10 years from now, have the world not exploded, I'm still getting paid for that video. So cumulatively, guess what guys? It adds up. It adds up. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching you guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.